is the fact that there is no COVID down here on Pandora, not one there single solitary case. Exactly. Okay, so they're portraying us as like some kind of a leper colony. After finding Shay and listening to the Homeless Idea podcast, and then later interviewing the locals, we became better informed on the word of mouth downtown. We then discover that the homeless camps will be evicted by May 20th, and that there aren't enough shelters for the entire population. This leaves us wondering where the story goes from here. So Fernie, what do you think about this uh, situation right now? It's like, I see that there's all the posted signs and it doesn't say that there's enough space for everyone to leave, to go to a space. But from what I'm seeing, everyone still has to leave. So they're just gonna go somewhere else and maybe be a, considered a problem all over again, which uh, right now during a time where they're really solving a lot of world crises, it just seems like there has been a little bit of uh, lack of planning to that poster, which is a demand. Yeah, what do you think? I think it's pretty bad planning if they think that they're going to remove all these people from their homes and if they don't have enough beds for everyone already, where where are they going to go, you know? They're just going to find another spot on the street. I feel like we need more permanent solutions. All this temporary housing is just temporary and maybe they're just doing it till COVID is over and uh, maybe after that we'll find something a little more permanent, but I just think there needs to be better communication between the forces and then the people who are actually living here. Uh, all about a communication problem. Nobody's actually asking them questions. And the same question all we've been asking again and again and again is uh, essentially how has life changed for you during the COVID crisis, which has raised a lot of other answers to the surface because it's the main thing we've been asking. And some people think it's better, like they get more resources, and some people think it sucks because they're getting kicked out of their houses now and they're being fenced in. Let's just keep asking that question. Definitely. Alrighty. We're heading to the next camp up at Topaz. This is going to give us a look around. We're going to get the scoop, the down low. The road to Topaz from Pandora was quite the distance, so we gave Shay and Sammy a ride. They offered to be our guides for safe access as we prepared to enter Topaz Tent City. Love it. Okay. So I've, got, I've got other guys that want to do documentaries too, but they just, you know what, they don't show up. And that's the thing is that, you know what, you can talk all you want to but until you're going to... You know, put your roll up your sleeves. Gas is going back up again, eh? It's. I think it's changing daily at the moment. Not HIV the is going to get you. SARS is going to get you. H1N1 is going to get you. It just goes on and on there's, and on. There's apparently like they're recording deaths that had nothing to do with COVID. It's COVID deaths. I keep saying there's not been a single case on Pandora. I don't. I can't speak for anywhere else, but this I know. Very few peop, uh, people have been affected on the island, and I think there's been one or maybe three deaths. I can't. Remember. On the island here? Yeah. Globally, they're they're padding the numbers by lumping COVID deaths in with the why are they other doing ones. That why, why, why are they masking? Why are they, why are they doing this COVID thing to, to obviously bring in these measures of like more control of the government? Yeah, and I'm homeless here. Yeah. Well, well, this is the best place to be because you know that's on the front line. I got nothing else. to lose, man. Yeah. Nothing to lose. No authorization was posted every 12 feet the entire length of fence wrapping around in every direction, encompassing the nearby children's park, public facilities, baseball diamond, and rest areas. Security guards paced the hallways made of metal mesh fencing as we enter Topaz Park. Read this, order of minister of public safety. I don't see any signs that say not to be where I am. Mm -hmm. And until somebody tells me not to be here, I think that we're okay to continue our documentary in this location. We all stick together. We're all good. I'm, uh, I'm damaged goods whatsoever. Like, I really am. Live on the street. What's normal, brother? What's normal? Yeah. I maintain whatsoever. I maintain. I survive. Uh, I've been to Vancouver. I've been to everywhere. And, uh, I've been on the street for 20 years. 20 years. Yeah. This is Topaz, obviously, where we're at right now. And have you guys been approached about that temporary margin of housing or have the hotels or anything that's going on? Well, I got a housing worker that I'm working with, and she doesn't do shit for me, but like, I'm surprised I'm not in the hotel. And, yeah. But to be honest, I'd, I'd rather I'd rather live out here than fucking anything yeah. else. Yeah, are you going to take a hotel off the offer you one? Or? Huh? Are you going to take a hotel off the offer you one? Do you think? Give no. A shot or? 
No, I'd rather I'd rather stay out here. I mean, there's no judgment though. There's no judgment. Yeah. I mean, if you take one, I'm they offered me one, and I'm gonna take one. Fuck it. It's been you know a long well, time for me to use. If it, if it happens to me, I'll take it. Yeah, you might as well. You know, you give it a shot because they say that it's gonna be like permanent housing too, right? So I don't know. We'll see. But I, I think there should be a lot more peer support put in place. Like we should be kind of helping monitor our own people, you know, because we understand our, each other and uh, they don't really understand our actions or our behaviors so much, but if we kind of were able to kind of like peer support each other in this transition, I think that'd probably be a lot better than hotel staff doing it, right, so. I've been homeless for 20 years and, you know, if I was to go into a hotel, it wouldn't even do anything. It's not fair what's going on to us out here. No, it's not. It's not. I've been on these streets for 20 Way too long. years. Way too long, bro. What I've learned from these streets is you know, you can take the person out the street, but you can't take the street away from them. Like, I love my brothers and sisters out there. It's hurting. It's yeah, hurting. It's, it's tough. It, 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 it gets, is. It gets rough. It gets, it gets tiring after a long time. You know what I mean? I understand it completely. Like, come on, man. I've been on the street for 20 years, and you think anybody's going to care about me? Well, I hope so, brother. I like, hope so. Like, honest yeah. to God? You think so? Know. Yeah, I do. Long, we know so. Like, do you know? There myself, are people though. that give a shit. You know what? The thing is, is anybody that collects a paycheck to so call, to give you help, they're I'm not talking, they're I'm not working talking. for the paycheck. They're they're not working for you. They don't give a shit, man. They just want to make sure that they got their mortgage paid, their car payments are done, their kids are fed. If, if it comes up, brother, I'd take it if I was you. I mean, yeah, get, get, take, get, a, you know, take the shelter, man. It. It's up like, to you personally. Like, to be you. honest, I'm not, I'm not going to be prejudiced or anything, but yeah. you know, with white people. Seems as though they get everything. No, I understand that, man, for sure. I like, agree. look at me. Like, I grew up as a foster child for fucking years, man. I've been slapped around. I've been. Dude, it's been that way. You think? For a long you time. think I get anything? Like, let me ask you guys. Do you think I get anything? What do I get? I get nothing. Yeah. I don't get I shit. Understand. I understand. You know what? I love. I love my street family here. I really do. Well, right on, man. well, thanks for, for sharing that with us. Man. Yeah. I appreciate it. It's awesome. It was really heartfelt. You know what? It's, it's not heartfelt, but it's it's from the heart. <laughs> That's <go>. great. <laughs> right on. All right, thanks, bro. Do you want your name on the video? Yeah, Jay. Jay. Jason. Right on, Jason. Thank you. That's what they want to hear. Well, you heard it. You know what I mean? <laughs> they lie, they lose. Cool, what's your name? The Claw. Nice. How long you been here? I'm the one who was here before anyone else. The first one? No, I was just here and then everyone else came. So you kind I didn't of know they were coming. You kind of like established it, huh? No, that would be reverent. I'm just low down on the... You seem like a cool guy, though. Yeah, yeah, he is. No, you seem like a cool guy. Yeah, I met him. He met the claw? Yeah. <laughs> he is cool. Right. So we're here in uh, Topaz right now. So and Owen's gone, so it's just me here. It's actually a makeshift memorial right here. It's RIP. This is something you never get used to. Right. You know, it's kind of like, I, I can relate that like when World War II, when those bomber pilots would take off, right? And like so many wouldn't come back, right? And that's what it's like here every day, right? These people all the time, it's a shame. You'll see ambulances and bodies galore. I mean, that, that stuff Narcan is the right hand of God. It should have mine on me, but you know, you can start kicking their feet. There's a lot of things you can do if you don't have it, right? So it's like coronavirus is almost one of the least, oh, it's, it's like, worse. It's not even a worry. Not what? even all, right? We're not, as you can see, we're not socializing. I mean, only social distancing, only what, you know, it's re required, right? Yeah. But people are still in close quarters here, like, just like it was. Like, you know, uh, the only one of the good things about crystal meth is it makes you immune to the cold and flu, right? So inevitably, that coronavirus is just a really strong flu, and it's probably not going to, you know, basically we're a food source for it, right? So it's going to want to grow from us, and you're going into a body that's saturated in speed. It's not going to like it, so... Right. It's either going to die out or jump somewhere else, right? Yeah, it's pretty much well known. It's documented in, in, in uh, medical journals too, right? Wow. So, we got other things to worry about. Yeah.
Almost two months. Board my scale and hasn't brought it back. The OT scale. Oh, Dallas, yeah. He's gonna get punched out if he doesn't be careful. That's kind of similar, right? It's missing one spoke. I don't care. Okay, uh, my, uh, this is like, what, a four, four, five hundred dollar rim? Yeah, yeah nice. Yes. Can you do that tubes? I don't because I had my tubes tied when I was eight. <laughs> eight years old. Oh yeah, it's, it was like peer pressure. You know, it's what you did when you were eight, isn't it? Damn. Yeah, I'm <laughs> Justin, is it? Yeah. All right, cool. Um, how you doing? I'm okay, man. Honestly, like, uh, just stressed out. Stressed frustrated. out. Frustrated. Yeah, why? Because everybody that was a junkie fucking lid got a place, a hotel room. Oh yeah. And I'm still stuck here. Like, I'm homeless because my ex. So and you... like, I didn't honestly necessarily put myself in this position. There's been washer and dryers stole from fucking hotel rooms. AC units out of the rooms themselves. That's fucking broken into vending machines for the money Wait. and the shit in it. Like, I don't understand how the process is for uh, selecting people. That so you want to get into a hotel? For sure I do, dude. But, like, yeah. uh, it doesn't seem to be a possibility it's... unless you're a junkie and you OD. Or, like, I don't know. It's highly frustrating. The people that want help don't get it. And the people that do get help don't want it. Right? Like, they don't want to better their lives. They don't want to get back on their feet. They just want a fucking free hotel room, right? Yeah. Like trash it and scrap $20 fucking AC unit for 20 bucks. And it kind of ruins it for everyone else. And it ruins it for everybody else. I heard that we're not even going to get a hotel rooms now, so. Oh, really? Like, that's not really fair to anybody, right? Yeah. I heard they might be moving people into the stadiums. Yeah, and that's a joke, man. Like, it's a fucking joke. Why did those guys get a chance at a hotel room and then I don't because they went and did that, right? But the federal government or whatever said that they need to end this homelessness bullshit. It's easy, man. If everybody in Canada gave $2, $2, that's 70 fucking million dollars for to end homelessness. How can 70 million not do that? Or like say it's a, a week or two week drive where you do a toonie a day, every person in Canada. That's a lot of fucking money, man. You could end this shit easy. It's a joke. It, obviously people don't want it to end because if they did, it would be done. Hopefully fucking shit will get back to normal and I can go back to kicking ass. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we world champ one day, use weight, man. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Trying to find solutions and making sure that we can slow down the spread of the virus within the street population and those people that are experiencing homelessness. Hey guys, so uh, it's like day four of our documentary and right now we are going around trying to get some other perspectives on the situation. Uh, we went to the police department, got to talk with the chief of police. Um, and now we're at the hospital. We're gonna see if we can talk to some administrative people at the building and get their perspective on what's going on, how life has changed for them, and see what the scoop is. So, life and times. Yeah. Here we go. I'll just ask you a couple questions before you come into the building today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, have you had any new fever recently? Uh, no. No. Any uh, cough? Shortness of breath? No, nope, none of that. Sore throat, painful swallowing, headache, muscle aches, nothing. You haven't been outside of the country in the last 14 days or been in contact with anyone who's been, been outside my, of the country? Been in my house a lot. Perfect, <laughs> that's what we prefer. Um, you haven't been told by a doctor that you have to self-isolate in the last 14 days? No. Nope. Next to doing this documentary, we've been pretty much doing the standard. Perfect. Uh, so I'll give you this red sticker here. And do you know where you're headed today? Uh, right here, actually, we were really hoping to essentially meet somebody from staff and uh, just ask them about the life and times during COVID-19. Uh, so I'm Daniel, I'm an RN at BC Cancer here in Victoria. I am screening at the doors today, so if anybody comes in or out of the building, we ask them who they are, if they have an appointment, uh, we run through our COVID-19 checklist, see if they have any of the identifiable symptoms of COVID-19. If they have an appointment and they clear a screening, they're welcome to come into the building. We'll be shown where to go. Uh, we are limiting to uh, 
no visitors for the time being unless absolutely necessary. So if somebody has a physical or a cognitive impairment where they require a visitor to uh, direct them or help them through their appointment, then that's acceptable, such as a first time appointment to chemotherapy. It's quite different here in the building these days. Normally you'd have much more patients coming in and out of appointments and being assessed by doctors and whatnot. Um, if anything can be done over the phone, for the most part it is being done over the phone now to uh, assure that there's no unnecessary traffic and possible spread of disease. Yeah. Earlier that day, we managed to get an interview with the Chief of Police, Dalmanic, to get a word from the police perspective during COVID-19 about the homeless. My name is Del Manick and I'm the Chief of the Victoria Police Department. Sure, well, it's changed for everybody. So it's changed for the Victoria Police Department. It's changed how we interact with our communities, uh, knowing that we have to maintain physical distancing and social distancing. It's really incumbent upon us to make sure that we find a new way of keeping our community safe making sure that our officers are safe so that we can actually deploy and help our communities and keep them safe, but also make sure that the public see us out in the community and know that we're out there uh, making sure that we're keeping them safe. So we, we've had some adjustments in the type of calls that we're handling and how we handle them and our police approach into how we're serving our community. This is a challenging situation. So with COVID and knowing how the virus is spread and knowing the importance of wearing, uh, you know, the hand washing, making sure we're maintaining social distancing. These are things that are a lot harder for a population that is quite vulnerable and challenged. And uh, so, I mean, I applaud all levels of government that are trying to find solutions and making sure that we can slow down the spread of the virus within the street population and those people that are experiencing homelessness. It's easier said than done, uh, and it's so, so important that we do the right thing. So it has been a challenge. I can tell you that um, you know many people have been moved uh, or, or have taken space up along the Pandora Corridor and also up at Topaz Park. And I know that BC Housing and Island Health and the City of Victoria are committed to trying to find better places, a roof over people's head, a place where people feel a sense of safety, where they know that their health is going to be protected as best as possible. So I applaud everyone's efforts, but I can tell you that uh, it's been a bit of a challenge. And of course, you know that those areas have grown, grown quite a bit and it's been a bit of a challenge. And, and from a police perspective, crime also comes in when you have these type of uh, locations. There's many people that we know that are prolific offenders with violence and property and they prey on our most vulnerable. So one of the challenges that we face as a police department is that we recognize that our most vulnerable and marginalized populations are also the ones that are seriously victimized on a regular basis. They have no voice, they have no say, so it's really important that the police department recognize that and we treat people with care, kindness and compassion and we respect people's dignity. But we also have a right and an obligation to actually protect their safety. And letting the criminals know that are preying on our most vulnerable, that we are not just gonna stand aside and let that occur, that we will hold them accountable. I follow up beside the police station at the Save on Foods event center, where the homeless are being relocated into cardboard pods. Hey guys, my name is Dan Allen, uh, Dan Allen YBR on Instagram. I found myself uh, homeless when I was kicked out of my apartment uh, for coming out as gay in Vancouver to my landlord and then I got my ID stolen in Vancouver and uh, it just happened that a lot of people ended up in strange circumstances all congregating here at the Save on Foods uh, arena in these pods that are actually if you see inside it's bizarrely a whole scene you really need to talk to these people I am just one person that actually is getting served money and so I hand out cigarettes. It's not that interesting. Also, the PHS staff is everything. An umbrella is everything, guys. These, uh, uh, these organizations need to be invested in to provide more pathways. This is all shits and... No, it's not. It's very serious, but we like to have fun. And uh, look at her. Put your titties away, honey. This is real and this is rolling, okay? Like, it's a scene, guys. PHS. 
and Umbrella and Kool-Aid need a lot of money to keep this shit going because it's very real here in Victoria and Vancouver. But very real solutions are coming out of this uh, COVIDiness. Hey guys, just checking up. It's Fernie and Owen here. Um, so Shay basically texted me saying he had some ideas to move forward with like homeless rights and whatnot. So we're just gonna give him a call and see what he's got to say. Hey Shay, it's Owen. The BC government plans on uh, shutting down everything on, on May 20th, so it looks like it's going to be like probably one of the massive, most massive uh, human rights violations the government's ever committed against its own people. It turns out that it's going to be probably uh, slamming the door on our face, the ones that are left behind without hotel rooms, which is usual. So what what is your strategy? Our strategy is that we've um, we've declared ourselves a federal encampment, our federal regulated encampment, uh, encampment under the UN and Canadian protocols. They've decreed this um, really brutal parks COVID-19 response regulation uh, plan that they have that basically uh, allows them to, uh, anything that is substance or matter will be uh, discarded because it could be infected and it will not be stored, it will be destroyed. Yeah, you guys download the uh, UN protocol for encampments. Canadian regulations for encampments. Cool, cool. Yeah. It's coming fast, man, because who knows what's going to happen. We need to, like, you know, obviously get our shit together and start increasing the love and stop victimizing people and brutalizing people and labeling people and all that crap. Where is everyone getting hotels after the 20th? Do they actually have, like, a solid no. plan to serve everyone? Where are they sending them? No. They're, they're, they're not. They're slamming the door in their face, tell them to get off, like, get off the field, get out of the park. But did they tell them where to go? They're going to be coming with uh, combat boots and tickets and police to tell them to get the fuck out of here and get in there. Uh, I hope, I hope for a peaceful re resolution. Maybe they'll surprise you. Because, I mean, the chief of police sounded like he was very, very sympathetic. So uh, maybe, maybe they do have a plan. I hope, I hope. I mean, we can hope that it's not going to be a shit show. I sure hope so, man. I sure hope so. UN style protocol encampment where people can recover from the street and be uh, kind of like returned into society at, at a normal keel. So my name is Freddie Savage, and we're about to go downtown and film some things. I'm not too sure what we're gonna film, but apparently we got a hot tip. So things are going down, and we're gonna catch the action, because that's what we do. We're go-getters, you feel? Yeah, those shoes say that we're go-getters. Those pink fans, pretty fly. I got shrub in my eyeball, and it kinda hurts. Quick update, guys. Me and uh, Freddie were just like hanging out skating and Owen calls us, apparently there's a lot of action going down at Pandora, so he made us go do this. Well, let's go, boys! Like, I rode the bus down here like a few weeks ago and there wasn't many Texas there are now, definitely. Crazy because, like, the few times I've walked through here, I haven't walked through here by choice. Yeah, I'm trying to say, but like, um. every time you walk through here, every, like, I don't know how to say it without sounding rude. There's a lot more like normal looking people here, but uh, looks like a lot of people are still here. Some are moved out, you can tell the empty spaces. So apparently, tomorrow this is all supposed to be gone. Oh, really? Yeah, Where are they supposed to be doing it? Uh, to like hotels and shit. Oh, shit. We attempted the social distance, passing through the narrow, populated, caged-in corridor between the tent sites. No extra change. She was standing out in So as you can see, we're here on Pandora Avenue, and it looks like they have these 
zoned off, these zoned off spaces. It is the eve of the 20th and I don't see these people going anywhere. So I assume that some people got hotels, some people got rezoned, but the vast majority of people are still out here on the street. We're all in this together. Um, humanity will survive. We will prevail. We will prevail. Peace out, peace and love. Okay, he's going to save him. <laughs> So we've had police, moving, you know, supervising the moving of the fences, yeah. making sure that we don't attack the uh, workers. Okay. And, and no one uh, attacked the workers yet. Okay. Generally speaking, we're on fairly friendly terms. Anyway, so they've been pretty good as far as you know sharing information. <laughs> Look over here. See, they as they clear. Oh, they are clearing out, huh? Yeah. Where are they going to? Well, they're going to the hotels. Comforted, and they're. I think the city's bought. It. Or, you know, there have been joint ventures as far as that goes. I don't know what really was going on. Of course, they don't read the papers enough. Yeah. There's still an order to have us removed. Minimal required force. So, meaning that whatever it takes. And you are going to have your final stand here, huh? Like oh, you said. Yeah, well, this is You're not going anywhere, huh? No, I'm not going to go anywhere when they base this so called order on the pandemic lie. It's safer here. Than it is in hotels or in the arena. <laughs> to, to do what they plan on doing is tr to tread all over our civil rights. You know, declaring an emergency when there really isn't one. Wuhan, China, where this was first introduced to the general public, I think China was uh, 16 days under lockdown. And uh, so here we are now, at least a couple months in. And not, nobody here has had COVID. And life moves on. Well, what's going on here, too, at the same time is uh, a lot of things are being revealed. A lot of people are actually being arrested, but not really? for the things you think. They're being arrested for things like pedophilia, human trafficking. And I'm feeling pretty confident that, uh, you know, all these corrupt governments are going to be called out and taken down. Don't worry, that's not COVID. That's just weed being smoked. <laughs> they call it the weed cough. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only thing that's really affecting us, huh, Chase? America-rona. <laughs> <laughs> this is within, a matter of fact, the scoop. This is scoop, kids. This is the scoop. What's the scoop? So I think that the government's decision today to extend that deadline to the 20th of May just recognizes that the population or this particular population is challenged and they are going to need more time. And I think that anytime we rush things, we usually don't get it right and there's mistakes that happen. So the fact that there's more time allowed to move a population, to give them the supports that they need and to do it on a timeline that works for them, I think shows more compassion and care and understanding. So I think that's good to see. So what's happening is that we are preparing for the eventual the eventuality of a possible arrest. So you want to have all your stuff packed up in case you That's, do get arrested or whatever? Yeah. And that gives us a chance to reset the whole sort of establishment. The provincial government had come out with an order to try to get everyone housed from the Pandora Corridor and Topaz Park into hotels and off-site within a two-week period. And I'm pleased to see that, that governments recognize that, you know, these things take time. Uh, with this population, there's a little bit more care that's needed and supports that are needed before you can actually move people. And many people aren't ready to move right when we might think that we have a place for them to stay. Slowly starting to take them down, like one by one. Yeah. So what's happening is that people are being paid $20 for their tents. Oh yeah. As they give them over to the city, which will then dispose of them as hazardous waste. Looks like the police are here, and uh, I'm not sure why they're kind of like pushing people away from here. But let's uh, let's get out and go take a look, I guess. All the tents are gone. Yeah, except for where the police are currently, and I think we should go uh, investigate. Yeah. Investigate. We'll do some. What was it? Question asking. <laughs> <laughs> Ministerial order number M one six six, and it's order for them to essentially just uh, close down the camp. So they they removed Colin from his house here. But are they going to be taking down his structure as well? Yes. So will he be recovering any of his his objects? All of these all of these objects and personal belongings are right now being inventoried, photographs have been taken. Okay. My understanding, because this now goes to bylaw, he can go down and uh, claim his items. Bernie, you look kind of metal there with the crows flying by. Let's go this way. Ah, 
Yeah. Hey, what's going on? Hey, brother, we're just we're standing here uh, in support and solidarity about being treated by the federal uh, regulation camp that we deserve to be treated like. Hey, man, did you get your podcast online? Yeah, we did. We, we, we're back back in action. Nice. That's awesome. Thanks for your support, guys. We're just we're signing up for human rights. Thank you very much. We're starting to like uh, flee Topaz, uh, it, coming down to Beacon Hill, which is exactly what the city didn't want. And now it's uh, now it's a nightmare. Now it's a, that's that's a local nightmare which they want yeah. to try and avoid. But they're trying to avoid by totally like muting us and and not giving us a voice at all. And now it's just a mess. And. Uh Obviously, you guys don't want to leave. You want to just... No, we're not going to go. Your Have homes. you seen the arena? Have you seen what they plan? I haven't seen it. They plan on putting us in concentration. I just want to sound about that. Right people know what kind of like like cage they plan on putting people in in that like kind of petri dish. That's the, the hockey rink. It's a bunch of like cubicles that are all cardboard, all lined up, and they're planning on forcing people into that. If they didn't, if they don't take that, then they're going to be put into such, such strife and misery in the parks that that's going to seem like a, a really good alternative is being almost in a, in a dormitory jail cell. We're thinking something more like a UN style protocol encampment where people can recover from the street and be uh, kind of like returned into society at a normal kind of keel than uh, just kind of slamming them in a the hotel room and expecting them to act like the normal people. It's just not, it's not possible. We're, people have been put into such levels of like misery and and uh, insanity out here in the street that you can't just expect us to just just give us a hotel room overnight and then people have people act normally. It's just not going to happen. But I think the overall goal is to actually get stable housing, not in hotel rooms, but a place where people can actually call home, and which also provides them the supports that many people so desperately need. So this is our way of let the BC yeah. government know that they should have confront, consulted with us the entire time and sent us wasting countless dollars like they did and you know to expect more of this if, if, if you guys continue to, to, to lead that way we're, this is only a small taste of what, what's going to come if you guys continue to lead this way we're going to block off major highways we have to we're a people we're, we're your citizens and if your citizenship doesn't stand up to you when you make bad decisions then uh, you know the rebellion is just that. It's pointless. So we are at the end of the documentary. It's been a bit of a journey. It is, and we couldn't think of a better way to end it than the way we started it. it is talking to each other about the project uh, mm -hmm. and where we've gone with it. And there was really no way to end it because it would, like, this goes on and on. And I think we have the power to change it now today, but we couldn't find a proper ending for the documentary after everything we've seen. Do you think that we're going to have a second wave of COVID-19 here on Vancouver Island. I think vaccinations will come into effect and it's just going to be something that we all deal with, but I don't think people are going to be as serious about it as they were for this first wave. Everyone was scared, but I think we're moving on in the right direction. What would be the best solution you could see to like, to like move forward with homelessness? I've seen that there's multiple demographics of homelessness now and some of them need those hospital services that used to exist uh, back when I was a kid that were supplied by the government and they had facilities to take care of people who had very serious uh, mental impairments. There's the other demographic that's just suffering with addiction and they're having a hard time because they go to work and then they relapse and they're targeted by criminals who sell them drugs again and it's a spiral uh, and then there's the group between both of them. These are the people who are struggling mentally, who are on the streets, who are also being targeted by drugs. And at that point, it just makes it really hard for them to seek help. So I think that there just needs to be more options for help that currently don't exist. Yeah. So for you, uh, what would you do to, out of all this, if you could come up with any idea just from what you've seen and the opinions have heard to maybe help homelessness? I guess it would just be cool to see, you know, the people that we know personally to eventually find happiness, housing, you know. 
Alright, well, it's been a fun journey, and uh, we want to bid you farewell, and thanks for watching our documentary. Maybe we'll make more. Maybe, maybe they'll, we'll revisit this topic eventually.